let me just tell you what, what my truck's doing, and then we'll see if we can figure this out. I, I'm, I'm going to need a little bit of help from one of the Pico guys to analyze this, but I want to introduce you to what I found, and, and then we'll go from there, okay? Um, on my snowboard trip this winter, I had my truck loaded down with everybody's stuff. So seven of us went two different vehicles. I had everybody's snowboards, all the gear in my truck and uh, like five or six different coolers, probably 10 cases of beer, wow. um, water, you know, it was loaded down. It's 2,500, so it handles it well. And it was the first time I noticed the vibration that I had, and it was about, it was weird. It was about 82 or 83 miles an hour. I would get this groan that felt like to me it was my differential in the back. Okay, and it was only on acceleration, not on decel. As soon as I let my foot off the gas, that vibration or groan, more of a groan, uh, not a tire vibration. You, we've all felt an imbalance in a tire, right? I think it was the pinion that was like shuddering. I, I think it's something in the diff. On my my suspicion is a pinion bearing. Yes, that's what I think. I'm not sure. Okay, um, so I. I didn't worry about it much, I just kind of stayed under that, you know, kind of kept it around 80 most of the time there, and uh, the speed limit was 70, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't speeding excessively. But he runs down down the highway. Yeah, 10 miles per hour is not speeding excessively. So I kept it about 80 and under, and it was fine, I just didn't worry about it. I guess I just attributed it to, I was loaded down, you know, maybe a different driveline angle, so I didn't think anything of it. Well, recently I put the lift kit on my truck. You guys are aware of that. <coughs> and I put my summer tires back on, which are a little bit bigger. They're 32-inch um, overall as opposed to, I think, 31.5, I think, is the overall diameter of the original 16-inch tires and rims. Point being, a little bit bigger tire, my mile per hour is off maybe three or four mile per hour. So if I'm doing 70, on my speedometer with these tires, I'm really doing about 74. Make sense? <laughs> it's not four mile per hour off the whole way. It's a percentage that changes. The faster you go, the more you're off in, in speed. It just has to do with the uh, rotation. There's a formula you can figure that out. Anyway, what I noticed, I was really paying attention to vibrations. When I put this lift kit on my truck, I was concerned about changing my driveline angles, and having vibrations that I did not want. So vibrations been a concern when I bought this lift kit. It was one of the things that I researched was what my driveline angles would be. When I did the front, we dropped the differential two inches to keep the driveline angle the same so it's not a front issue. And then in the rear, I only went up two inches. So it was a two inch block. And it was a tapered block that takes the rear diff and angles it up just a little bit to take care of that change in driveline angle back there. So my driveline angle should not be extreme in any way, shape, or form. It feels great, no problem, but here's what I noticed. My vibration is now about 70 mile per hour on my speedometer, which would be about 74. You guys follow? So my, my vibration before started about 83, and now it's down to about 74 if we do the math on where the vibration is. So I don't know, here's what I don't know, if it was a driveline angle change that lowered it, or if it was the tire change, which of course would change um, frequencies and, and maybe alter that vibration. You guys follow where I'm at? Here's the thing, it's the exact same vibration that I had, but I can now recreate it at a lower speed. So whether it was the lift kit that changed it or tires, that's up for debate. Point is, problem existed before the lift kit. I still think it's opinion bearing, okay? So this is the setup, and the, what it's using is, is something really simple. It's just using um, a piece that, it's a really heavy magnet that goes on your seat track. And the reason that they tell you to use the seat track is that's bolted to the frame and that provides very good transfer of vibrations of the drive line into uh, this particular tool. And it has a, um, an axis that runs this way, that runs this way, and then runs that way. So it's a three axis um, sensor, and that's why they're using 
three different channels with the Pico. There's software involved, and that software is, well, I guess I could probably show you that part. Um, well, I'll talk about it first. The software would be, I tell the, the scope that I have a V8 engine. I tell it my rear differential axle ratio. I tell it tire size. And then we're plugging into the data link connector as well. I'm providing, you see my, see my uh, little yeah. laptop-based <coughs> DLC connector. I'm, pl I'm plumbing that into my laptop as well. So I'm providing RPM and engine speed from my data link connector. And then it does math, and it knows the frequencies at which everything is running. Does that make sense? So it knows the frequency the engine's turning, it knows the frequency the tires are turning, it knows the frequency of the drive shafts and how they're turning. And so we look at the, the chart, and you can actually see on the screen up here, um, I'll pull that up and, and we'll see what vibration showed up. Questions so far? I think it's kind of cool. I, I'm not totally sure that you would use it in all situations. I still think we use our common sense, like just by feel. Uh, it's Dylan, right? Yeah. But you want to prove it. I, I want to prove it, and I, I think this this tool would really help in a customer situation where you show the customer what kind of vibrations maybe they have, and then you start with, you know, sometimes it's hey, let's balance these tires first because. I can't decipher anything else outside of the tire vibration you have and you show the customer look at this tire vibration and then you do that you fix that and then redo your vibration analysis and show the customer that, that they didn't waste their money that you have another issue and so that was one of the biggest reasons I think this was developed was was in customer satisfaction uh, in a way to prove that you're actually fixing things so um, let's pull up the file now and Again, I'm new at this, and I, I just not sure. I definitely have questions in here for myself, and I just I don't know if maybe I'm a little bit premature in, in sharing this with you guys. But um, let's move the cursor over a little bit, and this is going 60 miles per hour right here. And, and okay. what we're looking at at the top, the T1, that's tire vibration, T2 is a tire vibration, T3, so there's different levels and we can read about each of those and what they mean. Then there's an E1 that kind of can't see there, um, that's engine vibration, see the E1. Mm -hmm. And then P1s would be prop shaft. Now the thing with the prop shaft, that'd be your drive shaft, is that's anything that's rotating at the same speed as the prop shaft. So in other words, if you had a P1 vibration, that doesn't mean your drive shaft's out of balance. It could be something, anything that's rotating at the same speed as the prop, okay? Um, so that's what you're looking at. There's actually three dimensional things we can look at too, but just watch it. This is 60 mile per hour, and you can see the, uh, uh, the blue numbers down here is um, engine RPM and the red numbers is mile per hour so so let's watch it it's about 60 about 68 and it's there at 65 this is the, the point you want to watch that guy right there watch, watch this guy and, and it's p2 but I believe that 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 p2 um, number this one right here I'm not sure that it's that because you see how the t1 over here kind of grows with the I don't know how I did that. I want to get rid of those. Um, again, I'm learning this program. But look how bad, look how bad that got. That's at 72 mile per hour. I mean, it's there. I can hear it. I can feel it. And here's the issue. There's no designation for it. I would think, I don't know if that P2 right here corresponds to this. Um, you see how the E1 or the E2 over here kind of sits on top of the vibration? That's what I would have expected. Uh, look at P1. Thing. Look at P1 and, and T3 and T2. All are they all at the bottom? They are all to the left, aren't they? Yeah. So then is that a P2 vibration? That would make sense. So we can get a little bit of help, I think. Show vibrate help. So P2 is what we want to research here, right? 
Yeah. Um, engine speed. Prop shaft. Oh, you just. Yeah. So this is this is within the program too. Um, a second order would be two. That's us, right? P two. So we'll. It says causes two shakes or disturbances for each revolution. Ah, got it. Two. P one would be cause. Of one shake or disturbance for each revolution. So one of the other things I was thinking about is maybe a U joint. Um, I have heard of U joints providing vibrations. Kind of like the old play. Um, but let's read the P2 in correct vehicle trim height. Heavily loaded, towing a trailer. That was stuff that when I noticed it, but it was high RPM. Or have modified suspension systems. Uh -oh. This here's the thing. This problem existed before. Okay, I know that for sure. That was while it was heavily loaded. Though. It was while it was heavily loaded that I first felt it, yeah. and it was at 83 mile per hour. Now I wasn't drooping or anything. My truck sat level, and I haven't modified. You know, I didn't modify anything at that point. I had this groan. It was definitely there. Here's the thing. This groan is more pronounced now since I put the suspension lift in. But is it more pronounced because of my tires? Or is it more pronounced because of the kit? Or is it both? Questions ever, that questions I can't answer. Did you ever hear it in between? Like in between the time that you had everything loaded and in between? And uh, when you had the new suspension? Have I? Well, I never went 83. Uh, okay, you never I went. didn't know. I, okay. Just driving it. Another symptom, guys. I really feel like I can hear this bearing all the time. Even when I'm not hearing a vibration, I thought maybe it was tire noise. It is not as I'm going over different pavement surfaces. I can hear a groan, and that would be one thing we could put on the alignment rack and run the wheels and just listen to it. I, I believe we're going to hear that it. That would be a simple opinion one. Yeah, let's keep, let's keep reading. Um, so, trim height to be incorrect, resulting in improper prop shaft angles. This will change the universal joint working angles which will cause improper U-joint excel and D-cell cancellation. And by the way, as soon, I told you guys, as soon as I let off the throttle, this vibration is gone completely, right? Um, second order. So second order, if the vehicle has been raised with a lift kit or lower, the vibration may not be totally correctable but only minimized. That's funny that that's there. Let's keep reading. There was There's a back up on the top. So powertrain mounting. So this is uh, if powertrain is allowed to ex to move excessively, the working angles of U joints. So again, it's mentioning U joints, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. This can cause improper U joint XL and D cell cancellation. So again, U joint. You see how how maybe the program and this is actually altering my thought process here. Yeah. We we're thinking. If that is in fact a P2 vibration, you know, I guess a P1 opinion bearing wouldn't be, I guess it still could be though, uh, two vibrations per rotation. You understand P2, that's what that is. Mm. Um, so uh, as the axle shaft rotates, the U joints speed up and slow down twice per revolution. As this is not a constant velocity device, a U joint that is failing can cause these speed fluctuations to be felt or heard by the driver. I can hear it. I can hear it. This type of vibration is typically worse when turning corners. Most vehicles do not have the U-joints rotating on solid front axle. So they're talking about a front drive there. Don't let that throw you off. Um, I believe that's what that's referring to. To diagnose U-joint problems, perform the following. Remove the prop shaft and expect, inspect the joints for looseness and roughness through their full range of motion. That won't be hard to do. Look for missing or damaged parts. Look for signs of rust or lack of lubrication. Repair or replace as necessary. So, pretty sweet. Improperly phased or twisted. A twisted or improperly manufactured prop shaft can have U-joints that are out of phase. You guys know what that means, an out of phase U-joint. When you have a split drive shaft and you have two pieces, if you don't line the yokes up like they're supposed to, it, they will vibrate. and they're, they're designed that way to cancel each other out. <coughs> Uh, that is not an issue for me. And then drive axle problems. Many drive axle problems can result in a vibration which is prop shaft speed or tire speed. If the vehicle has a vibration that's equal to any order prop shaft 
to any order props after tire rotation and is not present when testing the vehicle in the workshop, it's possible that the vibration is being generated by internal front or rear axle components. So we can't totally disregard the bearing, I believe, that was our original suspicion here uh, based on this statement. If you could this change the bearing, even if you put a new one in. What's that? There's got to be a reason why it's causing it, otherwise it would just ruin the new bearing. That yeah, um, it has 70 some thousand miles. Sometimes bearings just fail too, you know? There's no play in that differential, I know that much. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with the whole like, looking at a bearing generically, but like a pinion bearing is a big ass heavy bearing. Sure. And 70,000 miles wear out. Agree. In fact, when I talked to Chris, who's the master tech at uh, the Chevy dealer where Ben works, he said that they don't go bad. So. Um, there's no leaks, so you would think fluid levels and, you know, was, was it starved of fluid? You know, those are questions you want to have. Um, and I also serviced the differential, too, about 50,000 miles. That's so, what what's that? That's what happened. It was my fault? <laughs> uh, it says, uh, what else? Um, this may also be true if the vibration was correctable in the workshop at return when the vehicle was driven on the road. These vibrations tend to be <coughs> aggravated by the load of the vehicle working against the ring and pinion gear. I'm reading this paragraph now. Since the pinion gear operates at the exact same speed as the prop shaft, they are bolted together through the pinion flames. The vibrations it produces will have the same frequency and symptoms. You guys understand that? Since the ring gear operates at the exact same speed as the tires, except while turning, the vibration it produces will have the same frequency and symptoms. So I'm not worried about a T vibration, am I? That's what that one's saying down here. So if I had a tire vibration that was not a tire, I can't overlook the ring gear because it's rotating at the same same rotation as the tires. You follow? And if I have a P vibration, which I do, I can't overlook the pinion gear and bearing. So that's pretty sweet, isn't it? It's pretty sweet. I'm pretty what time is this in here? Can we go back to I don't know how to go back. Right there. It's, just, it's right behind it. Just you see, you close it. Another window. Okay. So is this is that a P two vibration that we're looking at? It's right next to it. I guess it is. Yeah. It looks like it starts at the hump on every single one. Except yeah, the I, T one. I've seen that. You see how the E two is is over top. Um, I, I guess I was assuming that 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 would be the way this was designed. And I've seen it do that. Let's look at some other ones here through this. Listen see how the, here, look at the, look at the T1. See how it kind of grows with that spike? Um, and so I noticed that along the way. See how the E4 is on top? And, and some of that's just, you'll hit a bump in the road and it just happens to be the same frequency as E4 would be an engine. Uh, vibration four would be four times per rotation. That's what those numbers are. You don't think it's just where it took the measurement exactly? I, I don't know. I, I'm not totally sure. Um, Is there bullet points? They are. Well, check this out. Um, let's look at the D cell event. See my blue trace? That's really w going to show you where I let off the throttle, where my RPM. Um, I have another question about this program. Is am I measuring? Right now in this window, am I measuring right there or am I measuring right there or somewhere in between? I, I don't know and what, I, what I've tried to play with is moving that line and narrowing it, but it won't let me narrow it any further than that. Maybe, I don't know. So, but look at the time. This is 16.55, that's the seconds at the bottom, you see where I'm at? And then that's 16.60, so that's a five second block. Um, I can't go any narrower than that, at least down here. And this is all stuff with the program I need to become more familiar with. But um, it looks like we'll, we'll use the blue RPM number to help us with that. It looks like the yellow is where they're measuring that. So. Oh, wait, there was E2 right there. Yeah, but again, that's an engine vibration that sometimes if you hit a bump, these will bounce around and the rest of the time it's not labeled an E2. It, it's, it's not an engine vibration. I know that for sure and I don't need a tool to tell me that. Because if it was an engine vibration, um, it just 
it's not that kind of feel. I, I don't really have a better explanation than that. It's not an engine vibration. Have you thought about putting it up on a rack and running it? No, I, I want to do that. I absolutely, <laughs> absolutely want to do that. But let's watch this. Let's watch this. Ignore that E2 right there. That was like one moment in time where it interpreted that as an engine, and it's not. So, so that's 3,600. That's 76 mile per hour. And then this is right where I start decelerating. That's still 32. There's 2,800. See how it's shrinking? But I'm still going 77 mile per hour, right? And look, look how I mean, the vibration's pretty much gone at this point. I can no longer feel it. I can no longer hear it. So, so you can see, it is not it a looks speed like thing. The two on that one is on the first pump, not the second half on that. Oh, just don't it. So maybe that's something that is. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm with you. It does look like uh, what. Randy is pointing out is it looks like the P2 is is pointing at something totally different here and not that. And if that's the case, again, ignoring that one E2 capture, then if that's the case, I have some vibration that is not necessarily timed here with anything. And I don't know, could that be the pinion bearing that's doing that? And, and it's not really a... Oh, a, a one time per rotation type thing, but a constant growl. Um, what would that look like? I don't know. I'm going to send this file to my friend who is involved in writing this software and see what he says. But definitely, Dylan, this would be a point where I put the truck up in the air and I take a listen to it. Um, if that's a P2 vibration, we pull the drive shaft, which is four bolts and then do uh, a feel of the way those joints uh, move and see if we have any, any binding. And uh, then we go from there. Cool? Vibration analyzer. This might be the first time, well this is like the third time I've used it. This will be the first time that I'm actually, I think, able to see something. I had a Toyota I tried working on that um, it just had tire issues and driveline issues and I was struggling with the program too but but anyway another tool that you guys will be exposed to if you work for GM GM has this exact tool they just pipe it into their what do you guys use for your computer uh, and the program or the, the program, program like the laptop GDS. What, what's it called GDS or GDS GDS so, or um, yeah tech to win yeah. there's a bunch of them but you guys will will see this for sure out there little intro to the vibration analyzer. We'll see what happens with my truck and we'll plug that in here too. So I'm driving my truck right now and I figured you guys probably want to see this thing in action. I'm, I'm on the highway here so um, some of this is kind of difficult to do. I need to be careful. And uh, I'll let you guys watch it. That E4 vibration, eh? see, I don't even feel that. I don't know what that is. Seems excessive at the moment, but this vibration that, that I feel starts to occur around 70 is that P2. Just next to that P2, you guys watch that. I'm kind of behind the truck right now, so. But it's kind of cool, you can you talk about a vibration and you can feel it, but to be able to see it on top of that, I think it's, it's really neat. And I think this tool has some, some value to it for sure. So, all right, I'm doing 70 now, you see just to the right of that P2. Again, not sure if that is a P2 vibration. Really pronounced right now. everything. Let's get a picture of that. Adjust the scales there. Accelerating, decelerating, totally gone. Well, let's watch that one more time. There's some other views that we can look at too on this, but again, I'm learning the tool. I don't know all the ins and outs of it yet. 
as I learn it, I will certainly bring it to you guys. you guys have an opportunity to see it more to come I discovered something cool oh, <laughs> Neat. so you guys remember this big spike here right and the two pulse we were debating the p2 whether or not this was a, a p2 vibration right and the p2 to refresh your memory was two pulses per prop shaft rotation and that suggested a u-joint right but we weren't sure about the p2 not being at the top of that well i was playing around with this and when you pick uh, a different format the 3d frequency notice the p2 is exactly what that spike is so that entire kind of purple trace there that is the prop shaft it's pink you think it's pink? It's pink. Purplish. Purple to your right. Pink is E2, I think. Well, Look at E4. E2. Whatever. E4 is purple. <laughs> Violet. Yeah, and I don't, I don't <laughs> Fuchsia. fully understand how to read this, but I can clearly <laughs> see that the P2 vibration uh, is, in fact, the one that we were dealing with. So we, you guys we remember, as we were looking at this graph and we were going through it and we were debating you know, why that P2 square wasn't quite on top of that spike, like no designation on the spike. You guys remember the conversation? Yeah. Okay, just pointing that out to you as I was playing around with the program, that um, that is absolutely a P2 vibration. Nice. So the next step for me is I'm pulling the drive shaft. We're going to look at the U-joints, and I'll probably change them while I'm in there. Uh, there are 73,000 miles on the truck and I'm not pulling the drive shaft out without having two U-joints in hand. So that's my plan. Regardless of what I find visually, by moving the U-joints, I'm going to change them and redo these tests and see what happens. Part of the process for me and for you guys would be learning how to read this, learning how to use it, learning what variables there are. And if I change my U-joints and I still get a P2 vibration like this, then we're going to you know, add a variable to this condition or this mix. Cool? Mm -hmm. yep. So next step, pulling the drive shaft, putting two U-joints in, or doing a visual inspection first before we replace them. What about bar graph? <laughs> Did you check that out? Uh, I didn't, I don't know how to use this program <clears throat> totally <throat> yet, but... Um, oh, never mind. Bar graph shows me what... There's P2. Probably. I mean, it's giving me vector sum in milligrams. I don't even know how to read that, Shane, to be honest with you. Oh. Somebody smarter than me developed this program. If you, knew the guy, if you knew the guy, you'd understand. I've talked to him many times. Some Pico guys. Super smart guys that work for this company. So... Right. Yeah, and the E4 is an engine vibration, but yeah, don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Did you try to go any faster on your truck and now that you kept vibrating more? Uh, um, if it, I'm trying to, I don't know if I went much faster. I didn't on on uh, this capture, this is 72 miles an hour. Over here, maybe a little bit. There's 77. I tested this on my truck, too, and around 70, like 4, 75, 
I started feeling vibration and then passed that around 80, yeah. 85, there was nothing. And what you're describing is a typical tire vibration when you have that. And, yeah, and, and what, well, it, what it would be is someone uh, didn't balance them properly or you didn't mount them on the machine properly. Um, and nine times out of ten when you have a, a vibration like that, it is from improper alignment of the rim to the machine when you're doing tire balance. I think you should rebalance your tires. I absolutely do. And if you want to, we could do... Uh, a prop shaft, or we could do a vibration analysis on your truck, and I can show you that it's tires. Because I have some pretty knobby tires, too. And that's yeah. part of it. When you have those bigger knobby tires, they're difficult to balance, and sometimes you're not going to get rid of it, which is why I, I typically buy a better tire now, because vibrations bother me tremendously when I'm driving. It's so much so that I've, I've often <laughs> described that I would like to just open my door and jump out. <laughs> but I have some internal glitch that if, if something's vibrating like that and it's consistent and kind of like there's a frequency that I can feel or hear, I, it, I want, I have to fix it. And if I'm on a 10 hour trip with my family to the beach in a vehicle that has a tire vibration, I'm going to freak out. Just the way things work now up here in this crazy head of mine. So that's probably the reason why you stay away from that too, because of the sound of the tires? I stay away from very aggressive tires for that for that reason. And, and that's why I run a highway tire on my truck. Not to mention I'm not doing any off-roading anyway and I'd be wasting my time or and money buying a big aggressive tire. Alright, so to the truck would be next. Oh. Go ahead, man. You're up. Right. You drop it. I'm going to have it on film. Well, it's going to be on my chest. Okay, good. Well, we, we just want to try not to drop these caps, that's all, because I want to check them real close. All right. Where do you suggest going in it? Be I'd say behind it, between the nut and the... Use the other end of it, the straight end of it. Like, flip up. Yeah. Go between there and just tug on it. Is that out enough now we take these take those bolts out? Yeah. Good. Yeah, the top one's out. Can you can you hold the you got it? Yeah. Okay. Stickies? Um yeah, just put them on the ground. Don't worry about it. Um that's it taking this drive shaft out, guys. I just was showing this part, I guess I really didn't need to. Initial inspection. I do not believe that we're going to fix this. This feels good. May, may be a little bit snug. We'll see what the cups look like when I get them out. These ones, see any issues with dryness or rust. See the grease is still in those. No evidence back here. Again, I'll check those other two. It feels smooth. All right, so this is the, the front joint. And again, this one, this one feels fine. I don't feel any stiffness at all. If anything, this one's a little loose feeling. Um, you know, whether or not we fix this issue remains to be seen. Once we get these joints out, we'll look for any of them that are all rusty. Uh, I don't expect to see it. All right, I introduced this to you guys, I think, fr was it Friday? When I left Friday? Yes, sir. And uh, talking about the vibration analyzer that Pico has, and you can see where it's attached to the seat. Any questions on that? Everybody good with that? Then from that piece, it's wired into the, the no, not that piece, this piece here. So this is where your, uh, the vibration analyzer gets plugged into here. And then these three channels go right into, you know, the regular 
regular Pico scope. So this NVH uh, noise, uh, I forget what the NVH stands for, but anyway, it's a Pico NVH. It's like some kind of noise vibration. Hemobobber. Something. What would the H be? Harmonizer. I don't know. Okay, from there, we're, there's one more piece that we need, which I don't know that I'm showing. Yeah, I don't have it, but there's a, a piece that I'm plugged in. Oh, I, I do have it, it's right here. A little piece plugged into the data link connector. It's made by Mongoose. Uh, they have a bunch of different laptop-based OBD-type scan tools. So I need that, I need that piece to feed RPM and uh, what's the other one? Road speed into my scope the same time we're using this NVA. The blocks that I used, these are the, that's the after one. The ones to the left, doesn't really show the taper very well there, does it? Yeah, it yeah. In that picture, can you see the taper in, in that block? Okay, yeah. Oh, the picture to the left is the blocks I took out. And the picture to the right is the one that I put in. Nice. Um, the side uh, when we measured them, this one I don't have those captures right now, but this one was uh, an inch and seven eighths on this side, and this was two inches on this side. Where this one's a straight two inch on both sides. As far as the rear ride height goes, and we I measured that, no change whatsoever in my ride height. It was exactly the same before and after. <coughs> as far as the spacing from the bottom of the wheel to the top of the rear fender. So no change in ride height. Um, I, I guess maybe I thought that quarter inch difference might change it a little bit, but be, being it's two inches in the back, that kept the ride height the same. So no change in ride height whatsoever. The block, um, man, I can't see that. I wanted the part number up there. Um, this block was made by Tough Country, and this block was, was zone... I think zone off road was this one. Um, if any of you guys are putting lift kits in Chevys, uh, I think we can say Chevy for sure. GM. I don't know about the other manufacturers, the other trucks. Do not use a tapered block. Is what I learned from this whole fiasco. Do not use a tapered block. Uh, my vibration is completely, completely gone. Awesome. Um, Next page, so I did show the two inch measurement there. Was right. that, did you measure just from here to your home? Um, I measured, uh, did I measure what? Well, you're, well, the you're vibration? I All over the place for the, this weekend. I, oh, the whole weekend? Yeah, pretty oh, much. Okay. Yeah. So you think like 150 miles or what? Oh, no. No, maybe 30 miles at that most. <laughs> oh, that was it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I only live 16 miles from here, but it wasn't, it, it, it's not about the length of driving, it's yeah. a specific speed that I needed to hit during acceleration to prove the fix. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I don't know why I only have, I didn't download the right pictures. That's the picture of the block installed. I wanted a picture of the other one before I took it off. Again, that's the new block. I did not pull up, I wished I would have, the driveline angle or the pinion angle. Uh, I should have done it before and after. My intent was to do that and I forgot. So anyway, let's uh, look at the original vibration. This, this one's probably my best picture of before, okay? Uh, the road speed that was primarily around 70 mile per hour that was very pronounced. And it was only during acceleration. So if you watch where I'm at, look at this P2 vibration, this big giant spike in here. And you can see uh, the, the red line at the bottom, I am, I am accelerating. So you see the mile per hour is increasing. And then watch what happens as soon as I let off the throttle with that P2 vibration, watch what it does. So you guys see it was an acceleration. There's 76 miles an hour, but uh, I'm slowing down now. You can look at the, uh, what's the blue trace, RPM. So you're talking <coughs> 2,700 RPM there, and then right, I'm dropping down to 2,000 RPM there. So during acceleration, very pronounced. We can see that maybe a little better in this 3D graph. 
I, I wish I would have used this for the original analysis because we, as a class, we um, we had some questions on the on the P2 vibration and, and what it actually what we were actually looking at is definitely a prop two. So two pulses or two uh, specific frequencies per drive shaft rotation is what P2 is, right? So very bad. And then again, this is during the D cell event. That is slow, isn't it? Let's see, I almost see it better there. So there's D cell, and then I believe I'm accelerating again. Let's let that play. Look how bad it gets. Acceleration. There's D cell again. See, it almost disappears completely during D cell. Okay? All right, so that's a pretty decent capture. The E4 vibration is engine. It's an eight-cylinder engine, and so it would have four vibrations per crank rotation, right, each cylinder firing. Don't worry about the E4. I can't feel that at all. Uh, what we're looking for is for a P2 again. So let's, let's just kind of, this is where I, um, oh, I did have my radio playing at the beginning of this too. So some of this unidentified noise like in up in here, I had I forgot I had my radio playing. It was my subwoofer hit hitting. So, um, <laughs> Miles. No, I was listening to uh, uh, We Came as Romans this morning. Yeah, you were decelerating. You were decelerating. Were you breaking or were you just just decelerating? Letting my foot off the gas, but I was not breaking. And breaking or decel didn't matter as long as my foot was off the gas. That vibration was gone. Uh, ignore the first part of this. But watch our P2. You see where the P2 is around the 8, 80 hertz area? Watch the P2. That's where we want to focus. I'm accelerating. And look where that guy's at. I mean, it's a lot of this, again, I, stupid me. I had my radio playing. Um, but this part here where I'm steady throttle is, I think I realize about right here is where I turn the radio off. Right at the end. Look at the P2. Is E4 your subwoofer? <laughs> E4 is my engine. But, but watch P2. I mean, the whole time, guys, did you notice that that, that P2 vibration is 100% completely gone? The E4, that looks like a bad vibration, but uh, you know, I don't know enough about these readings to the left. This MG, is that milligrams? Is that like the weight of the vibration? I'm not totally sure. But... Uh, I can't feel that E4 at all. If, if, if my transmission's in, uh, in, I don't know if it's necessarily overdrive, but when the torque converter clutch locks up, where you have one-to-one -one between engine and transmission, that's when that E4 becomes very pronounced, rightly so, because that fluid coupling is missing. Um, I can't feel that E4. It's the P2 where our focus, we want to be on this P2. And, I mean, it's pretty much pretty much non-existent, isn't it? Look at the P2 from, this would be the the after picture of the P2, right? The, the two vibrations per prop shaft rotation, P2. Um, and one more time, let me show you the P4. What do you think? Freaking quarter of an inch block, tapered block, made that much difference. And you know the reason I, I got thrown off by this, and I put U joints in it, and obviously that didn't fix it, is I had this vibration. Remember, I described it to you guys on the way to Vermont with a fully loaded vehicle. I had this vibration, the same one, not nearly as pronounced, at around 83 mile per hour, only during acceleration. I, I recognized it on the highway. My buddy sitting next to me. I'm like, did you feel that? He's like, yeah, and, I, and we were trying to hit that same vibration frequency area, and we couldn't really hit it, but then we got it back up to speed again. It was around 83, 84 mile per hour that we started feeling that same kind of vibration. So when I put the lift kit on, um, I, I just was thinking about, okay, I did feel this before, and that's why I didn't necessarily believe it was the blocks. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, if it was putting the blocks in and then the lift kit and then this vibration started immediately, then I would have 
uh, zeroed in on that maybe sooner, but I did do U-joints, which did not fix it. And uh, I'd like to show you where we, where we got that info from, this one. This is where we got the info from. So this is within the software, within the program itself. So we had a P2, right? Second order prop shaft speed related vibrations, P2. Uh, it says cause uh, two shakes or disturbances for each revolution of the prop shaft. That was us. So then I clicked on that. We read a little bit about it. Uh, here's some bullets that... Uh, all right, this is like usually caused by, it says incorrect vehicle trim height, uh, powertrain mounting problems failed or failing U-joint. So you see where my focus was initially, improperly phased or twisted prop shafts. That's pretty much us. I don't know if it would be phased. It wasn't a phase issue. It was a, it was a working angle, wasn't it? Improper prop shaft, prop shaft working angle. That would be what, what we did, wasn't it? Uh, by putting the straight cut blocks in the rear, we changed our our angle. Um, number one is well, man. What's that? Number one is well, improper vehicle height. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's afterward at height now. Yeah, for sure. It says that this is, um, wait, let me go back to the to the U joint why we, why I believe this is what my problem was, was when I had that weighted vehicle on that drive before I lifted it. Remove the prop shaft, inspect the joints for looseness, roughness, and their full range of motion, which is what I did when I changed the U-joints. They were totally fine before I put them in, but I changed them anyway. Um, you're still left with some of this. You're still left with, I think, uh, parts changing. This causes improper. So this would be Im improperly phased, misaligned, or twisted. This causes improper U-joint XL and D-cell cancellation to take place, resulting in second-order prop speed-related vibration. Working angle must be correct for that configuration. What's my working angle? See, this is that's what I should have done. This is the part that I'm angry at myself that I did not do when I put the new blocks in. I could measure it now, but it doesn't matter. I don't have the... I don't have the right, I, don't, I wouldn't have it before and after. So, I don't want to say. Both working angles should be equal within specs. But here's the key, I think, with this and why mine might have an issue. Can you see the, the angle that they're showing the, you know, you're looking at this line and you're looking at this line. Can you see that they're parallel with each other? What happens when I put the tapered block in the rear with that rear, with this rear uh, angle right here? If I could have measured it, It'll bring it up. yeah, this line would have ended up being not much, right? Would it, would it ended up being like that? So therein lies the problem. They're not canceling each other out. I mean, clearly I have evidence of it. It wasn't just me saying, hey, it feels great. And, you know, sometimes you, I've said this in the past, when we put a part in a car, there's a kind of a placebo effect where you think you fix something and, you know, it's running great, but, you know, drive it for a couple more days and it's still there and you're like, nah, I didn't fix it. You get the same kind of thing when you wash and wax your vehicle, like how nice it rides and has nothing to do with that. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool info that's in here. Uh, it was still, I'm still learning this program, learning how to use it. Uh, I really wish I would have. I really wish I would have done these measurements. And I don't know where you get this info from. It's. Should be equal within specs of what? Where do we get these from? You know, I'm not sure. This is new to me, this kind of stuff. But clearly I fixed it. I am very happy about it. And we'll definitely need to update this uh, 
series that I did, this lift kit series with this final piece to say, hey, use some straight cut blocks. And props to the guy. See, I wish I had the video pulled up right now. I probably should find it. I need to give this guy credit because he, it was a, a video I watched just trying to find why my truck was vibrating and see if anyone else had run into anything like this. And I, the first I heard about it was a guy that had mentioned uh, using straight cut blocks in his system and fixing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I can't find it. So um, we're just going to uh, end that there. I'll find it later, maybe in the edit of it, and throw it in here. But um, take note of that. Um, some of you, Jason, I think you mentioned running into this, or one of you guys did, where you were putting you were putting uh, weights on the drive shaft to fix these issues, and uh, maybe that wasn't the answer. That might have fixed the. No, I, didn't, I didn't add any. There was something on there. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Straight cut blocks, guys.